Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session on searching library databases. This is the third or fourth session in our fall webinar series, and we are happy to have you with us today. Just as a quick overview for those who have not attended one of these before, what we will do is Glenn, our access services librarian, will give his presentation, and we will have time for questions at the end, both recorded and unrecorded. Feel free to leave your questions in the chat at any time, and if I can break in and ask Glenn if it's a good time for them. Otherwise, we will be glad to hear from you at the end. So take it away, Glenn. All right, thank you, Megan. Um, so today we're gonna to be talking about uh, searching the library databases. Um, so just a little briefly about me. Um, like Megan said, I'm the Access Services Librarian uh, here at UDC. Um, so my contact information is uh, on the screen here, my emails. Um, you can also reach me at the circulation email address and, and then my office phone number as well. Um, so just to go over uh, in this webinar, what we're gonna cover, just um, it's a real brief, brief um, what is a database? Um, I know sometimes your professors will sort of talk about, you know, use the databases, but maybe sort of explaining what the databases are, explain what they are, uh, where you can find them, some basic search tips when you're using them, um, and how to select a database. And then we're going to do a hands-on demonstration on uh, four sort of broad topic databases, some of our most basic ones, um, which will be Academic Search Premier, JSTOR, Opposing Viewpoints and Context, and ProQuest Multiple Database Search. Uh, additionally, on uh, if you're not uh, watching this live, you're probably watching this on our YouTube page. Uh, also on the YouTube page, we have in-depth tutorials on these databases here. Uh, most of the, some of them are done by UDC library staff. Some of them are actually demonstrations um, that are done by uh, staff who work at the publishers of these databases. So you can get some real um, insider information, some hands-on uh, demonstrations on using uh, the databases that you see on the screen right now. So uh, just some real, real basic on uh, uh, using um, the databases. So when we're talking about databases, what we're just talking about in general is a large collection of data that's organized um, and it's organized in a way that you can use, you can easily search it and you can easily retrieve that data. So when we're talking about um, databases, um, a good way to think about how, what the databases are and how they work is to think of something like streaming services like Netflix or Disney Plus or Apple TV or any of the other sort of myriad options that have popped up in the last couple of years. So uh, all of those streaming services like Netflix, those are also databases. Um, what they're not is they're not academic databases. So just as, as a brief sort of sort of how they're similar and how they're different. Uh, an academic database, which is what we're talking about today, is in general, it's a collection of periodicals. And uh, by periodicals, you know, journals, um, magazines, newspapers, and books that are searchable via what's called a graphical user interface or a GUI. Um, so uh, if you think of like on you know, the Netflix homepage, when you're going through and looking at the options that are on Netflix, that's also a GUI. Um, and on so on the streaming services side, uh, we can see that they are also have a collection. Um, so in this case, the data that is the, being collected is periodicals, journals, articles, books, et cetera. Um, Streaming services have collections of movies and television shows that you can retrieve um, by using the GUI. You know, you don't have to, you know, go in and type in any code to find uh, um, retrieve items in Netflix. You know, you don't have to sort of, you know, dig through folders. You know, like you do some on your computer, for example. Um, you can find all of that. It's easily findable, and easily searchable. Uh, academic databases. Uh, you can filter the results um, with facets based on, you know, is this peer reviewed? Uh, when was this published? Is it a full text article? And similarly with streaming services, you can um, filter your results based on the genre, the format, 
actors who may be in it, who's the director, uh, and those sorts of things. Uh, both our databases and streaming services work on a subscription-based model. So with Netflix, you know, you're paying the subscription for access for you. You may share it with, you know, some friends or family. Whereas with us, the library pays for it. And that means that we have bought, uh, we have purchased access uh, on a subscription basis. So usually annually uh, for people who are affiliated with the university. So faculty, staff, and students, but that also includes people who come into the library to use our computers. Um, we'll be talking about that in a little bit, but just sort of know if you come into the library, even if you're not uh, a current student, faculty, or staff, you can still use um, our databases. You still have access because you're logging on um, you're a user of our library, whereas to use it, um, to access it remotely, you would have to sign in with your uh, UDC uh, uh, login information. So that would be, in that case, only current students, faculty, and staff do have that, um, would have that, so they, um, only they would have access to access these databases when they're not on campus. Um, both these types of databases, uh, content is constantly updating. Um, we have limited access to new content. You'll see this sometimes where it'll tell you, um, you know, we don't have, we, a lot of times academic, these, um, these databases won't give us access to the most, the last six months, the last year, the last year and a half of the current issues of uh, certain journals. Um, so it is something to be uh, aware of and to take note of. Um, in much the same way that sort of you no know, Netflix doesn't get the latest season of The Flash, you know, until the current season's over, and then that whole season comes onto Netflix. Um, and like with academic databases um, and streaming services, the the publisher of the database sometimes they own the journals, sometimes they're creating content, other times they're licensing it um, from the owners of other journals. So there's assembling a lot of uh, journals and books, both that they are the publishers of, and then also that they're getting from other publishers. So some quick tips when you're um, in the databases and you're using it, um, you'll find more of these quick tips if you go to our, um, we have a LibGuide, which is just a guide for using the library. Um, on finding articles. And I'll show you where to find that on the library webpage um, when we go into our demonstration. Uh, but some real briefly, um, when you use the databases, you wanna think about keywords. Those are words or short phrases um, that describe, explain, or represent concepts. Um, so unlike Google, I know some people use um, Google and they use, uh, you know, they'll type out when they're looking for information, They'll type out a complete sentence. You know, um, what time is the movie playing at the theater? No. So, um, whereas also if you're using Google, you can just pick out the important the important words or the important phrases in that question and put those in. Uh, academic databases are the same way. You want to be thinking about what's the simplest way that I can explain what I'm looking for. Uh, quotation marks are great when we're talking about the phrases. Um, what the quotation mark says is that you're looking for those exact words in that exact order. So if you're looking for um, a proper noun, which is like a title of something that's several words long, and you want to make sure that it's searching for that exact phrase, put those into quotation marks. Uh, search filters, we'll go over these when we go into the database themselves. Um, but these are um, ways of sort of narrowing down your results to find exactly what you're looking for. Um, and finally, we have what are called Boolean operators. Um, Boolean operators, there are three main ones. And what that does is that lets you take several of your keywords and um, sort of mix and match. So if we, the main ones are and, or, or not. So we look at these demonstrations here or means that in this case, they're, they're searching fruit, vegetables, and cereals. 
But they, if you use or between those, so fruit or vegetables or cereals, it'll find you any result that has at least one of those in it. So it'll, um, so it's very broad. And is exclusive, and it's looking for something where only certain phrases or words are present. So in this case, dairy products and export and Europe will bring you only those results that have all three of those in. So or is inclusive and is exclusive. Uh, and finally, we have not. So in this case, this person is searching for apples, but not fruit. So in this case, it's going to bring, or sorry, it's searching for fruit, but not apples. Uh, so it's going to bring you back the results for fruit, but anything that says apples, it's not going to be included. Um, so those are some quick tips of um, when we're in searching, and we'll go over how you would use those sort of in practice when you're actually in the databases. So let's look for the database. Um, Let's actually go into the databases and look for them. So the, UDF, the UDC library, um, you know, just a quick Google search. It's also available from the main UDC site. Um, there's a link there. First thing I want to do is just scroll down to here and uh, show you this is where you can find that finding articles help guide. Um, and this has a lot more information. Um, that we're going to cover. But this tips and tricks, you see this is sort of, um, you know, if you have sort of advanced search skills, citation tra uh, chaining, um, these are all great things to take a look at uh, when you have some free time. So let's go back. And on uh, yes, okay. Uh, so on the uh, library homepage, the, you can find our databases in this A to Z resource list. There's also a link to the A to Z resource list from this finding articles help guide, but we're just going to go to there from here. One thing to keep in mind is that if you are uh, accessing the databases remotely, which is if you are not using uh, a computer that's on campus, if you go to one of these databases, um, what you'll get is you'll get a login screen on the, uh, it'd be mostly a red page on the right side of the screen. It will ask you for your uh, UDC login and password. Make sure you do, uh, make sure whenever you're not on campus and you're trying to get to a database, you're always going to the database from a UDC web page. If you go directly to the database, the, um, they don't recognize that you're affiliated with UDC and they'll treat you just like a regular visitor. But if you go there from a UDC web page, uh, we have what's called a proxy server, which sort of, um, if you're not on campus, which you'll sign in and then that when you get to the database, it knows that you're affiliated with the university. Um, so I am currently on campus right now. So you're not, so I'm not going to get that um, sign-in page, but just make sure you're always going to um, going to the databases uh, from a UDC web page, like, like our A to Z resource list here. Um, so just a couple of things to go over while you're at the resource list. Um, you can filter uh, databases by subject. So if you're doing research on a certain topic or you need it for a certain class, you can go into here and filter, for example, um, databases that deal with healthcare professions. Um, whenever you change, uh, select a subject, the first thing that'll come up is all of your best bets for that subject. So these are the ones that we recommend the most if you're doing research um, in a healthcare subject. Um, you can see we go to, and then we can just go to all subjects. So, um, you can also uh, filter what type of database you're looking for. So if you're looking for archives, ebooks, government documents, images, video, 
Uh, so we do have some databases that do have um, streaming video um, that is available. Uh, our vendors and providers. So if you notice that our two biggest um, vendors um, that provide us databases is EBSCO and ProQuest. So two of the databases that we're actually going to examine um, when we do our demonstration is Academic Search Premier, which is an EBSCO database, and ProQuest Multiple Database Search, which is a ProQuest database. And all of the database, all the EBSCO databases and all the ProQuest databases have the same interface. So once you see how to use um, Academic Search Premier, that'll also show you how to use all the other EBSCO databases. And you can also do a search in databases if you're looking for a specific keyword or um, uh, something else that you're looking for. On the right-hand side, you'll see these are our most popular databases. Um, they're all ones that are marked with a popular tag. So for example, Academic Search Premier is here. It's also on our um, total list, and it has that popular tag. Um, so the, the four that we're going to be going over are all on this popular databases because they're pretty broad. They cover a lot of different topics. Um, they're pretty comprehensive and they're pretty uh, user-friendly. One other thing I want to draw your attention to while we're on this page is our new or trial databases. These are databases that are either new, so we want to make sure that people are aware that we have them. So Black Life in America, Distilling the Modern World, the Ebony Magazine Archive, um, those are all new. We also have trial databases, um, Black Male Archives, there's at least one other, let me scroll down, a um, couple others down here, Shakespeare's Words and Sage Research Methods. All of our trial databases um, in, in the description includes a feedback form. So if you find yourself going into one of these databases and using it, uh, we do ask that you just take a moment and just um, you know, fill out the form. I'm just going to show you kind of briefly what we're asking. You know, just what's your rating? Um, any specific comments? Anything that we need to know? What that really does is, you know, like I mentioned before, all of these databases we have access to on a subscription-based model, um, and we don't have, you know, an infinite supply of money. So we have to sometimes make decisions about what databases we are going to continue to subscribe for, subscribe to. Um, and what new databases that we may want to subscribe to. And sometimes that means sort of um, cutting out databases that aren't used very much or that are redundant with other ones that we get. Um, so feedback from users is very important when we're making those decisions. But um, so let's go into our uh, databases. So Academic Search Premier um, is an EBSCO database. It is great for undergraduate research needs, um, has journals and books, and it covers a number of different disciplines. So let's go to there. So um, one thing you'll see is that uh, you'll see UDC library up here. If I was not on campus and I was going directly to the uh, academic search premiere from um, like if I had bookmarked it, I wouldn't see this because EBSCO doesn't know that you're coming to their database from UDC or, or WRLC. So always make sure that you're coming from, you know, this page. So now that we're in the database, um, we can do a search. So let's say we're doing research on global warming. So if we start typing things in. One thing you'll notice is that this database does give you suggestions. So it has like some autofill suggestions. One thing that is suggesting is global warming, but also if you notice global warming and climate change. So if you think back to those, uh, those Boolean um, operators, so and means that it's looking for global warming and it's also looking for climate change. One thing that we could do is we could um, put these on two different bars and it was looking for this search term and this search term. Now we could also do or, 
So in this case, it's looking for either global warming or climate change. So it's thinking if it has either one of those, then um, uh, that give you a broader search. So let's just go with global warming for right now. We have, you can uh, do filters here. Uh, if you notice there is full text. So if you click that, it'll only give you results where we have access to the full text of the article. Um, you can also click, let's say a lot of professors will insist that for their assignments that you are only using scholarly journals or peer reviewed journals. Um, you can click that there. Um, you also have the option of doing this after we do our search. So let's just do that search for right now. So what it'll do is it'll give you um, a suggested topic. It'll also give you um, multiple articles here. And um, a big filter that I want to point out is this one here, which is publication date. A lot of times professors will ask you for current articles or um, articles from the last 10 years or so. Uh, some databases will have a slider like this. Right now it's showing results from between 1978 and uh, today's uh, date of 2021. We can use the slider to go up to 10 years. And you can notice that our search results um, also dropped when we did that. We can also go into any of these here and do more filtering. So if we only want English language, we can do that. That'll update the number of results that we have. Um, one thing to be aware of is that in academic journals, uh, a lot of them will also feature book reviews. So if you're only looking for articles, but you don't want any of these um, either book reviews or journal reviews or other reviews, we can select that and then that'll only pull out those. And notice our results have dropped again. So right now we have you know, almost 5,000 results. So we can keep doing filters to, uh, right? So if we want to do global warming or climate change, um, that'll give us more results because it's inclusive. Um, we could also pick a location. So if we want to think about what the effect of climate change on, um, let's say, uh, Washington, D.C. Now, it'll give us some other options here. So it can either Washington, D.C. or Washington, D.C. with the period or District of Columbia. So right now, we're asking it for something that includes this or this and includes one of these terms as well. So from 5,000, we're down to 250. So again, we can keep using our, um, our filters or we can start looking through the articles that we have. So from our search results, let's say I wanna take a look at this. I can click on that title. What that'll do, it'll tell us the authors, what journal this is coming from, including um, month, the year, the volume, the issue number, uh, and then the page range. If you see, I've noticed up here, we have um, some images that would be in the article. We have subject terms. Subject terms is a great way of, so if you were um, looking for more articles like this, you can use the subject terms. And then, so if I click on this, this will find me everything that has that freezes meteorology in the article. Um, so that's a good way of once you find one article that you really like, you can use those search terms to, um, to try to find more. We have the abstract. The abstract is sort of like a summary of what the article itself is going to be. Reading through the abstract will save you a lot of time, especially if you're going through a lot of articles. So that rather than read through, for example, multiple 17 page articles, you can read through um, a paragraph or two that sort of summarizes the article and see if that is something that you're actually looking for. Um, 
um, affiliations of the authors. So it'll uh, show you right there. So from this page, you can, if you need to find out information about the journal itself, you can click on the journal. This will type the publisher information, the ISSN number, um, pre, uh, other issues of that journal that we have access to in this database. So if we look at what was in 2013, you notice there was multiple issues published in 2013. The URL for the publisher, a description of the publisher, is the published is this journal peer reviewed? So then let's go back. And so from this uh, page, I can download a PDF of the full text of this article. Um, I also have the option to print. That'll print this page. Um, if I go back. You can also see that I don't even have to go into there to get the full text. I can just get the full text from here. So if I click PDF full text, uh, it's loading up. And so you see I have a full text, full color PDF of uh, this article which includes um, some nice graphs and diagrams um, that you may want to refer back to. So this is Academic Search Complete. Um, real basic on how to use uh, this database here. So let's close out of this. And let's, I'm going to skip ahead to the ProQuest multiple database search. Again, ProQuest is another one of those uh, companies that publishes a, has a lot of different databases that we have access to. So you'll see this interface um, in multiple databases when you are uh, searching. So again, you notice we have access provided by University of the District of Columbia. And from here, we can do a similar search. So you notice at, at this point, we only have one search bar. So I can either you do my and if you notice, we have uh, more suggestions. So if I do global warming or climate change, I can do that. I can also do my full text or peer reviewed filters. Um, so that is, by default, it shows you the basic search. Basic search, one line. Um, I can also go, it has uh, search tips here, but also I can go to advanced search. And then this looks a little more like what we had with EBSCO where we have, we can have multiple lines. We can add rows if we want. We can limit to full text and peer reviewed. Um, let's go back to this search where we have full text, peer reviewed. Let's just do a search here. So here's our total results. Again, quite a lot. So we can start to filter things. Um, if we're looking for articles, what we're looking for is to be a scholarly articles. So we can click that to filter things. Publication date, we can either go with one of the ones that they have selected. So they have uh, last 12 months, last five years, last 10 years, or we can do a custom date range. If you notice, this one doesn't have a slider. Um, this one you actually are going to enter in um, either year, month, date, year, month, or just the year. Um, or we can just pick this, you know, last 10 years if, if that's what we're interested in, and it'll auto fill that out for you. Up at the top, you see that these are the filters that we've already applied to the search. If we ever want to get rid of ones, let's say I don't care about this only being scholarly articles, I can remove that filter right there. Then I can put it back on if you want. Um, we can also, you know, we can uh, add a subject filter. We can go down, um, add a filter for language. So we can keep applying filters. We can uh, modify the search that we initially had. Uh, we can use advanced search to add more search terms. But if I decide that I like um, so we want to take a look at this article. 
same thing. So if we click on the article title, this brings us to the uh, full text of the article, just that like we had before. Um, whenever you see a screen like this, if you look up at the top, you'll see a button for download and a button for print. So this is where you, um, same with EBSCO, you'll have uh, like a PDF reader built into the site itself. And these icons are the same in both. If we go to this abstract details, this is what we had with the, uh, with the EBSCO one. We have our subjects, uh, we have our abstracts, we have the publication title, and then more information on, uh, you know, volume issue year. All the information that we had in EBSCO, you can also get in, in uh, the ProQuest one. So that's what we have. Also from the search, you're, you can get the go to the abstract details, or you can just go right to the full text PDF. Um, so that is the ProQuest multiple database search. And like, like I said, so the EBSCO and so the academic search premier and the ProQuest multiple database search um, those publishers have all um, published the majority of the databases that we have. So if once you're familiar with the way those are laid out, you'll be familiar with the way a lot of the other ones are laid out as well. Um, so the next one I want to take a look at is JSTOR. Uh, it stands for Journal Storage. We can go here. So we're in the advanced search. We have our access provided by up at the top. Um, very similar, we have our keywords, second keywords. Um, we can either search all the content that's on JSTOR or all the content that I can access. That means is what access um, does UDC have to what JSTOR has. And again, we have our same sort of filters. We can filter for articles, um, languages, publication dates, um, we can, we have a, we can uh, narrow by discipline or journal. So if I click here, that'll only return results um, for journals that have uh, the discipline African American studies. But if I click this arrow here, this will actually show us what those journals actually are. So if there is some that I just don't want, let's say I don't want any results from I'm just going to pick one randomly. Uh, this Linux Avenue, I can take that off, and then it won't be included in my search results. Um, but so let me see what we have. So I'm going to do my same. So climate change or. Um, content I can access, let's do that. I want articles. Um, I want English. So I have to put in a year. So again, I'm going to put in 2011 to 2021 for my 10 year range. And let's see what we get if we just select the African American studies filter. Um, so today, okay. And now let's submit this advanced search and see what we get. Okay, could not try to use this as your query or use advanced search. So what I think we have is let's do articles. Let's avoid putting as many filters in the search as before we do the search, then we can filter afterwards. So there we go. So um, now notice we have the same, our same um, filter on the left hand side. Looks a little different, but it's you know much the same thing. We have let's select journals. Um, from 2011. You can also change it to BCE if, uh, if you're looking for you know, content, um, probably not with climate change, but um, other things. 
I am kind of curious if we what we get with the. Um, so we got all of our search, our filters that we were using previously. Um, yeah, I guess so for this one, for JSTOR, don't put all of your stuff on your initial search. Um, do your first search and then let's filter, and then you can filter your results with these, um, with your facets on the left hand side. Uh, again, we click on the article title. We get the abstract. We get information about what uh, issue this article was in, information about the author. And we can download a PDF of the article. So if we go down, um, we see we have the article here. And again, you have the op your option to download it or to print uh, from there. So let's close out of that. So those three um, are kind of sort of our three big ones in terms of getting journal articles. And the last one is that I'm going to show you, opposing viewpoints and context, um, works a little differently. So with with uh, this one, anytime you have uh, you have to do a persuasive um, paper or you have to do a paper that looks at multiple sides of a specific issue, or if you're doing research on um, any kind of like hot um, hot button, you know. Uh, uh, topic or controversial subject, uh, opposing viewpoints is a great one to go to. So this is separated up into different issues. So you, if you're looking at sort of the um, the categories that we have here, that gives you a good idea. Um, so business economics, energy, environmentalism, health and medicine, um, law and politics, society and culture. Um, so if we're still doing our um, energy and environmentalism that is going to be in here and let's see global warming and climate change so let's click on that and see what we've got so we'll it's they start with a overview of the of the topic once you pick one um, you can go through start reading um, you know it'll summarize uh, Sort of overall, sort of the um, different viewpoints and sort of you know why is this topic controversial? Uh, what are the sort of the issues within this broader topic? And then what it will have is featured viewpoints, and then it has viewpoints in general, which is sort of different editorials um, and a lot of sort of. Uh, um, essays or other papers that are sort of cover a variety of perspectives on this topic. Um, right, so we have somebody talking about a Green New Deal as our best chance of a climate crisis, whereas we have other people saying rich people paying other rich people not a climate solution. We can't offset our way out of the climate emergency. Um, we have primary sources. Um, so we've done the primary sources. You know, the primary sources are sort of it's data and information that is uh, direct. So people doing direct research, um, you know, firsthand accounts uh, from somebody who experienced an event. Um, those are all primary sources. We also have um, articles from academic journals. Um, that are on our topic. Uh, we have uh, reference materials. Reference is things like encyclopedias or dictionaries um, that can sort of give you a good overview of the topic. And then just a lot of different things. We have there's audio, there's video, infographics. Um, so, for example, like uh, things that summarize like polls, or uh, in this case, this is what's the US public perceptions of the existence and impact of climate change. It'll tell you what it covers. And then this sort of lets you sort of see the data that's been collected over time. And 
you know, so people what people are um, in March 2021, people's reported uh, level of concern for harm caused by environmental hazards. So if you notice that most people are very worried about water pollution or extreme heat, whereas rising sea levels seem based, um, people seem to be less mark that as very worried about. So this is a good place if you have a, a controversial topic, a topic where there's a lot of different viewpoints. Um, uh, this uh, uh, opposing viewpoints in context is a great place to start. Um, so those are the four resources that I wanted to go over. Are there any questions? Thank you, Glenn. If you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or unmute yourself uh, while we wait for those to come in. A couple of comments of no questions here. Um, while we wait for those to come in, I'm going to drop a link into the chat. This is for our assessment form. We are going to continue offering these webinars and we'd love your feedback on them, you know, how you think they're going and what you'd like to see in the future. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions come in on the recording, so I would like to say thank you for attending today, and I'm going to stop the recording now.